This is the Cube. If it's September and Moscone is red, it's probably Oracle Open World and the Cube is here. This is our fourth year with the Cube at Oracle Open World. I'm Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman and Jeff Kelly and we're here. John Furrier is on his way up the Pacific Coast Highway. He had to drop his son off at uh, UC Santa Barbara this weekend and uh, he'll be here this afternoon. So we're going to be covering Oracle Open World wall to wall for three days. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we've got executives, we've got technologists from the ecosystem, and we'll be unpacking what's going on at Oracle, Oracle's innovations, uh, their transformation that you're seeing in the last four years, cloud, Oracle 12C, engineered systems, and how they are competing in the marketplace, how they're adding value, what customers are doing, with those capabilities, and of course, the new theme, big data, which we heard a lot about this morning. Last night in the traditional Sunday night kickoff, Larry Ellison talked to the crowd here. The crowd is uh, claimed to be 60,000 strong. Uh, or, uh, Oracle CEO, Larry Ellison, talked to the crowd about Oracle 12C, its performance, the cloud, uh, human capital management. Oracle is virtually touching every part of the value chain. Back in 2005, Oracle decided that it was going to change the game. Or Oracle CEO used to ridicule competitors for writing checks, not code. Uh, a, a reference to the fact that Oracle spent a lot of money on R&D and a lot of its competitors were out buying companies, notably CA uh, and others, IBM as well. In 2005, Oracle changed the game with a blockbuster acquisition of PeopleSoft and it went, went on an unprecedented acquisition spree to change the nature of the company. Today, Oracle Open World, as I say, is claimed to be 60,000 attendees. Probably half of those attendees are from companies that Oracle acquired. These are companies whose customers were taking chances, taking risks, not taking the safe bet, and now here they are at Oracle. So the question is, can Oracle innovate? Can they continue to push the envelope? Can they attract that customer and maintain that customer, that customer that would take a chance? So now they're, they're part of the so-called Red Stack, which is of course a reference to the Oracle integrated systems, engineered systems from microprocessor all the way up through the application. And we're here at theCUBE covering this. Uh, Jeff Kelly, we heard this morning, it's Big Data Day, uh, uh, and Stu Miniman, we're live inside the QLogic booth. QLogic is a company that makes uh, host bus adapters. They basically are glue between storage and networking. They make stuff run faster. So Stu, let's start with you. Um, we're inside the QLogic booth. Uh, Oracle, not known as a hardware company, but in the last couple of years, uh, really been a hardware company, you're a hardware guy. What's your take on what Oracle is doing in this play called Converged Infrastructure? Yeah, Dave, well, I think it goes back to what you talked about. Oracle has been acquiring companies. Of course, the big one from a hardware infrastructure standpoint is still Sun. Uh, Sun gave uh, you know, Oracle uh, you know, the compute layer, uh, and they've been looking to add to it. Uh, a little over a year ago, they bought Zygo, uh, which uh, some called an SDN play, but really is, is more of that converged infrastructure play. Um, Oracle even has some networking functionality. Uh, right down the aisle from us is Melanin, and uh, Oracle has put 10 per, owns 10% of the company there. So Oracle has been adding to its red stack. Uh, there are a couple of sessions here on SDN, which was of course the buzz at uh, VMworld when we were here a couple of weeks ago. And uh, Oracle has its virtualization layer, Oracle VM, uh, trying to compete against VMware. So as, as we talked about, Oracle really optimizes for their applications that complete up and down the stack. And as uh, David Fleur, our CTO said, the farther up the stack you go, uh, really the exponentially more value you can create. So Oracle, you know, arguably has the, the deepest and fullest stack, uh, but they do have lots of competition from the likes of IBM, from VCE, uh, EMC, NetApp and the like, uh, who, who are pushing that. So, um, because they can be a more general purpose solution, uh, everybody claims, of course, to be cheaper. Flash is changing the economics big time, something that we're going to dig into deep here uh, with a lot of the Flash partners of Oracle, and also QLogic. QLogic has a nice Flash solution called Fabric Cache, uh, which allows uh, server-based Flash to be added to the SAN. So interesting technology we'll definitely talk about later during the show. So Oracle has become, overnight, uh, with the Sun acquisition, a hardware company. A lot of people, myself included, thought that Oracle would jettison the Sun business. No, Oracle has a completely different strategy. They change the game and really are driving toward what they call engineered systems. That means the entire stack vertically integrated from hardware through software and services and management uh, all bundled together, pre-tested, pre-configured, pre-engineered. Oracle has ar ar arguably, actually, probably not arguably, the most robust stack. I think only IBM can probably compete in terms of its overall capabilities with how much capabilities is in one vertically integrated company. 
On the other hand, you have companies like VMware and EMC that are trying to uh, vertically integrate through an ecosystem partnership. EMC, Cisco, VMware, VCE, and the like. But this morning, I want to turn the conversation to big data. Back in 2010, when theCUBE was at Hadoop World, we had Mike Olson on, who will be on later this week. And Mike Olson said, back in the day, if you had a big data problem, you'd shove all your data into a big Unix box and you'd buy some Oracle licenses, and if you had any money left over, you'd, you'd buy some storage and hire some people to analyze that data. Basically, Mike's implication was the world has changed, and now uh, you can basically analyze data for much, much less. Well, today, we heard from Oracle things like key value stores and NoSQL databases and filtering in Hadoop and bringing data into analytics uh, systems. So I want to go to you, Jeff Kelly. What's going on there? Oracle has become a big data company. Indeed, uh, so you know, Oracle is smart. They're seeing the, uh, the momentum around big data and how much data and analytics is changing the way business is done these days. Uh, so you know, they're taking uh, their traditional approach of uh, really integrating systems, as you said, Dave, uh, to make big data and analytics uh, much more uh, simple and accessible for their customers. So you know, when we look at the big data world and this whole movement of big data, it's really focused around open source, scale out commodity hardware, um, you know, integrating, uh, needing teams on the, on the ground in your organization to integrate all these pieces together, uh, needing a team of data scientists to then take all that data, do some analysis, find some insights, and then of course application developers and others to really productionize those insights into applications that end users can, uh, business users can use to actually drive business decisions. So Oracle is saying, well look, that's a pretty difficult uh, challenge to actually get all those people on the ground to make that actually happen inside the enterprise. So uh, Oracle is saying, look, let us do the hard work of integrating these systems. Uh, they've uh, announced or, or released a number of products to, to try to co cover the spectrum of big data uh, workloads from their big data appliance, which includes Cloudera's Hadoop software, uh, their Exadata uh, machine for large scale analytics on mostly structured data, uh, their Exalytics BI uh, applications, um, and now, of course, their in-memory uh, database, which is really focused uh, to compete against uh, SAP HANA and some others. Uh, but they're saying, look, let us take all those pieces, integrate it with our hardware, we'll drop it in your organization, make it very easy to crunch data in Hadoop, move it over to your Exadata database, surface it with Exalytics, uh, potentially run some workloads in their new in-memory in database, and you don't need that team, really the, the level of expertise inside your organization to do all that configuration. Let us do it for you. Uh, we'll take, as Mark Hurd said in his keynote this morning, we'll take that, uh, all that uh, cost out of the equation for you. We'll put it on our bottom line, and we'll, we'll, we'll do that work for you. Um, so it's an interesting play, and of course it fits very well with Oracle's strategy, um, but they've got the proprietary hardware, the proprietary software. It's, it's from, on the very foundational level, it's different from what we're seeing in the rest of the big data world, but they're, they're betting on this integrated system, taking away all that complexity will allow people, allow organizations to hit uh, their ROI much faster with big data. So a lot of the big data purists, a lot of the, the Hadoop startups would poo-poo what, what Oracle's doing because uh, Oracle really doesn't really didn't talk much about open source today. However, uh, I will point out they, that Mark Hurd in his, in his keynote, he had on uh, the CEO of Boeing in a, in a video. He had on the, uh, a senior executive from Thomson Reuters. He had the CEO of the New York Stock Exchange. Yes. All three talked about data. All three talked about how they're getting value from data. All three talked about ROI. So Oracle essentially has co-opted the big data message and the meme, acted like they invented it, and are now selling business value to senior executives, application heads, the leaders that are spent writing the big checks. Well, so, so look, obviously Oracle has uh, great relationships with senior executives at their customer base, inside their customer base. Um, as I said, they're taking away that complexity, and we recently did some research on Wikibon, which found that uh, the ROI companies are, are getting back from their investments in big data is, is lacking right now. Nearly half of the respondents to our survey said you know, they haven't reached a level of uh, return on investment that they expected at this point. Uh, in, in their uh, big data journey. So, um, you know, there is a long way to go for a lot of these organizations and what we found is a lot of, the, a lot of the, the challenge that these companies have about making the most of their big data investment is exactly what, we're, what I was just talking about, the integrating all these different systems together, bringing in data from multiple uh, places, keeping your Hadoop cluster up and running optimally, connecting different data sources, and that's exactly what Oracle says, we will take all that out of the equation for you, you don't have to worry about that. You're going to pay us a lot for it, but we're betting that the level of innovation that you can now do using your data is going to more than pay for the investment you're going to have to pay uh, Oracle. 
So we're here at Oracle Open World 2013. This is theCUBE, we're inside the QLogic booth. We want to thank our friends at QLogic. Uh, we, have to, we have to go under the radar inside of uh, Oracle Open World, and QLogic has been so generous with its, uh, with its booth space over the last four years, and uh, it's, it's fantastic. We want to thank, thank QLogic, shout out to them. Let's break down Oracle. Oracle's a $37 billion company. They got a $160 billion roughly market cap. Uh, and they are a cash flow machine. Oracle threw off $14 billion in free cash flow in the last 12 months. That's almost as much as IBM in the last 12 months. The other thing about Oracle is they are, they are an operating margin machine. They, they've, they've got 39% operating margins, 45% last quarter. Microsoft operating margins are 39%. VMware and EMCs are 19%. You know, IBMs are probably in the low 20s, 21%. So you're talking Oracle is a substantially more profitable company than most of their peers. So they're, they're, they're throwing off a lot of cash, they're investing that cash in R&D. Oracle spends about $5 billion a year in R&D. The company's growing at about 4%. Its software uh, license revenue grew about 8% last quarter. Its hardware business is down, way down. So they still haven't hit the bottom of the Sun acquisition. The hardware business is declining. Now there are some bright spots. One bright spot that uh, Safra Katz talked about on the call was the ZFS appliance. Basically in the storage side, it's a Sun uh, developed ZFS appliance. Oracle's going after NetApp. Uh, NetApp was a big Oracle player. NetApp used to brag that it is number one uh, inside of Oracle. So Oracle essentially is taking that NAS box and going after NetApp. That's the low hanging fruit now. They've made some recent announcements that make it better positioned for uh, uh, analytics workloads, but it's still not positioned well. Oracle storage is still not positioned well for the core OLTP business that really is dominated by EMC. EMC has 80,000 customers. Uh, it, within Oracle, Oracle's own hardware business comprises only about 40,000 customers, so Oracle has a lot of work to do there, but they're making strides, so that's something that we're watching. Oracle shipped 2,000 engineered systems, to uh, in the last six months. Uh, how does that compare to, say, a, a VCE or a, or a NetApp FlexPod yeah, or Dave, HP? Dave, so Gartner, uh, I'm sorry, uh, if you look at the, uh, from a revenue standpoint, Oracle is right up there with the big guys. So we know VCE, uh, Q4 last year at over 250 million, they're on a billion dollar run rate. Uh, NetApp is close behind with their reference architecture is what they're doing. Uh, you know, the convergence is just growing massively. Uh, we, we we're seeing you know, 50 to 100% revenue year over year growth from most of the converged solutions from you know, the, the big guys like you know, IBM, HP, and EMC down to some of the startups even if you look at uh, people like Nimble Storage and Tintree that are starting to partner with Cisco, uh, they, they're really growing in this space. But you know, Oracle is right with them. Uh, it's a little bit tough for me to parse some of the data because of course, since Oracle owns the entire stack, how much of that is hardware, how much of that is software, whereas it's much easier for us to look at you know, HP who's almost all hardware, or VCE, which has a very small piece of software in that entire piece of the solution. So you can see we're diving all around the stack here because Oracle has a very wide stack. I mean, it starts with, you know, essentially, you know, the, the server-based uh, Spark systems that it has. Of course, Intel was up today giving a keynote. Really, the ironic thing about Oracle Open World is you've got partners paying through the nose to give keynotes. You've got Intel up there, you've got Fujitsu up there, EMC, Joe Tucci's going to be here. These partners pay to get in front of Oracle's 60,000 customers and really peddle their wares. And uh, it's, it's really an interesting dynamic. Uh, so that just talks to the power that Oracle has in the marketplace. It's got like nearly 500,000 customers. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the cloud. Uh, Oracle's cloud is comprised of many, many clouds. You've got the Oracle Public Cloud. You've also got other acquisitions that Oracle has made, like right now, uh, 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 Eloqua, uh, Taleo. These are components of Oracle's cloud strategy whereby it competes with the likes of Salesforce and Workday uh, and, and others, uh, SAP in particular. Uh, and, and so, Oracle has built a collection of clouds. Oracle will claim that it sells more cloud business, has more cloud revenue than Workday. Of course, Workday is the new hot company on the marketplace. Uh, they are smoking hot. And Workday would, of course, point out that the Oracle cloud is a collection of all these clouds. So, really it's the Workday, all the wood behind one arrow in HR and now finance versus Oracle's bits and pieces that they brought together. So as I said earlier, and we're going to talk to Ray Wang about this, he wrote a piece about this the other day, can Oracle appeal, can it show, demonstrate that it's got innovation, that it can appeal to the customers of those companies that it has acquired? 
uh, those leading edge companies. And we're seeing that, of course, Jeff Kelly in, in big data. Um, let's come back to that. Sure. Uh, let's come back to what's happened in the big data space. Uh, four years ago, when we were at Hadoop World, it was like, what is Hadoop? What is, what can I do with it? You know, what is it all about? And then it sort of emerged into how do I make it enterprise ready? Is Oracle's strategy succeeding in terms of making Hadoop and big data enterprise ready? Well, I think you know, they have an opportunity here. I mean, I think they're doing what they did with cloud, right? They're, they waited for kind of some of the early market uh, uh, disruptions to happen. Uh, they're seeing how big data is starting to play out, and now they're kind of co-opting the message uh, and really starting to deliver products that are targeting those workloads and big data that are going to actually drive value. So, you know, I think they have an opportunity, certainly, uh, to add some value to their customers well, around big data. Let's talk a little bit about what Thomas Curian said today. He said we have really three components to our big data strategy is to ingest, to store, and analyze. And he talked about uh, their key value store capability. Oracle has announced its own NoSQL database. That's right, right. it's got its own NoSQL database. Okay, so it saw the NoSQL trend and it said, well, we're not going to get crushed by NoSQL, we're going to develop our own. Or, we can make NoSQL work with the Oracle stack, mm -hmm. right? Isn't that, isn't that been their strategy? As well, they talked about our integration today. And they, then they talked about, of course, bringing the data into Exadata, Exalytics, and their engineered mm -hmm. systems, which is, again, why Oracle has 45% operating margins last quarter. <laughs> <laughs> but, the allure of those integrated systems to the CEOs that we heard about is significant. Absolutely. Um, you know, the, one of the key reasons that organizations are not realizing the full value of their investment in big data is that they don't have the staff the experienced, skilled staff to integrate these systems themselves and keep them running optimally. And simply, that is a big, that is a big stumbling block. And you're seeing, Oracle's not the only one going for these kind of converged systems. Uh, HP's got their own app system uh, line, which includes uh, basically an appliance for their uh, Vertica database, uh, an appliance for Cloudera Hadoop distribution, um, even an appliance for SAP's HANA database. Uh, IBM's got their pure data line, which includes uh, both uh, essentially what is a, an appliance of what was, or what used to be called Natiza. Uh, they're big in, an appliance uh, or function format, I should say, around their big insights to Duke distribution. So they have some competition in this space and there's clearly, I think clearly senior executives at these, uh, at customer organizations are realizing, look, if we want to start getting value out of this today, we don't have the wherewithal to, to hire and train this, the level of staff that we're going to need. And so they're looking at these pre-engineered systems that they can simply drop into their data centers and start realizing value much quicker. So when you talk about, you hear about the Oracle Key Value Store, you hear about Hadoop, you hear about our integration, and then you hear about engineered systems. You hear about hybrid columnar, smart scan, flash cache, in-memory databases. Oracle really trying to wrap a blanket around that with the engineered systems, the hardware and software engineered together. And their argument is really there's three benefits there. You're essentially shifting your, your, the customer testing into Oracle's R&D, the second is you're driving performance, and the third is you're improving the customer experience. There really isn't another company in big data, with the exception of IBM, right. that can actually make that claim, and as well, I would argue, uh, the, the, the likes of, of VMC and VMware, and of course HP as well, playing the ecosystem mm -hmm. card. Absolutely, um, and if you think about Oracle's other advantage, of course, is their you know, huge, just traditional database install. Um, where again, integrating all these existing systems, your existing databases with or uh, sorry, with big data, with Hadoop, with NoSQL databases, uh, you know, can be a challenge. And if you've got an install base with a significant uh, deployment of Oracle databases, Oracle enterprise applications, and now Oracle says, well, we can drop in big data capabilities and integrate it cleanly with those systems. Uh, again, that's going to be highly uh, attractive to a lot of CIOs and senior executives. All right, so now let's talk about how companies compete with that strategy, with that red stack strategy. Oracle goes all the way up through the database into the applications with what it calls engineered systems. Other competitors, again, with the, with the, with the exception of IBM, but, but not even, I mean, I want to get Stu Miniman's feedback on that, but other competitors, generally speaking, stop at the infrastructure. They're basically putting forth a cloud-like infrastructure that can support applications across the portfolio. So Stu, talk about how companies can compete with the Oracle Red Stack approach, that engineered system approach, and what should be the customer's decision points around that? Yeah, Dave, Dave great point, because uh, I wrote two years ago that uh, you know, the further up the stack you go, it, 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 it's that balance of how do I have a general purpose solution because that is more economically viable, but I really wanted to work uh, with my specific application, and the challenge that we have is that 
uh, you know, IT operations are spending way too much time optimizing environments. It really goes against the trend of the hyperscale deployment. If you look at what Facebook does, they can deploy you know, 10,000 servers uh, that are managed by a single uh, you know, person. So they don't overfit the infrastructure to the application, but there is value to make sure that I get the response time and, and uh, you know, have the infrastructure really work with the application. Flash is really changing the game on this, and some of the other competitors are working at uh, deploying solutions that fit for applications. You know, for example, VCE, who's the market leader in this space, just released a specialized system for high performance databases. So their first environment, of course, is Oracle. We're going to have on VCE later this week to talk about that. And they've really gone through a lot of uh, you know, Flash embedded in the solution because as I put Flash into the environment, uh, it really changes that performance dynamic. So before I really had to you know, over tweak and make sure that everything works, if I really can put in a high performance Flash layer or solution set, I can really remove performance from the overall deployment and therefore I've got a lot more flexibility and I can deploy those specialized environments. So Flash is a major theme at this show. Uh, why? Because Oracle databases <laughs> need to run fast. Flash is a way to improve the performance of the database. Uh, we have a guest up next uh, that's never been on theCUBE before, uh, to my knowledge anyway, SanDisk. SanDisk is a, a, a major worldwide player in Flash, providing and powering a lot of the, the Flash systems that you, you hear about, a lot of brands that you hear about um, that you may not associate with a, with a SanDisk. So they're the technology provider underneath uh, a lot of these brands. So they're going to be on, we're going to talk about that. So keep it right there everybody, I'll be back with uh, Stu Miniman and Jeff Kelly throughout the day, John Furrier will be here la later. If it's September and Moscone is red, it's Oracle Open World and theCUBE is here. We'll be right back after this word.